Broadcasting from the KMF Collective Studio, it's time for the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. This limited release show features the stories of the 2020 contestants of Dwayne The Rock Johnson's athletic competition, NBC's The Titan Games. Now, here's your host, Katie Galley. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 23 of the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. I'm your host, Katie Galley. In the KMF Collective Studio with me today, I have Titan Games athlete, Army Lieutenant Colonel Engineer, and current Army Athlete of the Year, Eric Palisha. How are you doing, Eric? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I know we were going back and forth because you're in Germany right now, right? That's right. A little bit of a time zone difference here. A <laughs> little bit of a time zone difference, but I'm super excited we got to uh, work this out. Um, so again, thank you, Eric, for uh, for taking this time. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. Yeah, me too. So Eric, just to kind of get to know your background a little bit, um, can you share with us maybe where you grew up and how, if at all, was your childhood shaped by athletics? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so... Uh, <laughs> I was an Air Force brat, so where I grew up is kind of difficult. Uh, when my when my grandparents came to America, they all got sent to Pittsburgh. So my entire family lives up and down Interstate 79 from Pittsburgh to Erie. But uh, I, I I am not from there. So uh, I grew up mostly in the Philippines and in Alaska. Um, I'm the product of 12 public schools growing up, you know, the typical moving around multiple schools a year kind of a thing. Yeah. And then um, my, my last most recent high school I graduated from was in Stoneboro, Pennsylvania. So about an hour north of Pittsburgh, so and that's where my parents live now, so I guess I'm from there. Um, my upbringing in all of that, how did it help with athletics? Well, it did the exact opposite. It didn't, didn't help at all. <laughs> um, you know, perpetually, perpetually being the new person everywhere you go and having that period of reestablishment, uh, there was never really a chance to get into a lot of sports before you moved again and changed things up. You know, and It didn't help uh, to, to keep an interest in anything. Um, also, I was a really late developer. Uh, I didn't. I didn't even break five feet tall until I was almost a junior in high school. So I was really tiny. And then when I went to college, I was 120 pounds. So uh, late, late developer. So I, I didn't really play a lot of uh, sports. I, I, I ran track and cross country. Um, and by ran track and cross country, it's like in uh, in name only. I was present. <laughs> so, <laughs> Present for present for the ability to run around in a circle. That was about that was about it. And it wasn't until I got to uh, to college and to uh, the army before it started really developing in me. And that's because mostly I started to to grow. I started to get a little bigger and put on some weight and realized that uh, hey, life can be different. I don't have to be this uh, this other person anymore. I can do something different. And then the great thing about the army, uh, <laughs> the great thing about the army, is a great thing about the army is the development and interest it and the organization and people take in someone when they see something in anyone. Um, and even if somebody, they don't see something in somebody, there's, there's always a chance. There's always a developmental structure around everyone where you can see a light in the tunnel. There's always a goal. There's always something to work towards and people will always help you out with that. And being in college at West Point where I went to, and then in the army, a lot of, you know, who I am, I owe to everyone, not just one person, just the whole collective community in the Army that set out goals for me, said you can accomplish these things, and then, you know, helped me, a lot, helped me out a little bit along the way, and then it let me develop me, so... Mm-hmm. I love that. I mean, like you said, it's being it's, of course, you deciding that you, um, you know, wanted to grow, but it's a a product of being shaped by great people around you and encouraging you and um, to be better. And so, Eric, what made you just I mean, of course, you said you grew up um, being an Air Force brat. And so you moved around a lot. So you were familiar um, with that life. But what ultimately made you decide that you wanted to go into the Army? I flipped a coin. I was uh, only going to go to school where it was paid for. When I, when my, after my first day in ninth grade, my dad said, hey, Eric, how was your first day of high school? You know, that kind of thing. I was like, oh, it was fun. And he was like, good. If you want to go to college, there's a lot of money out there for it, and I got none of it for you. And if, uh, so be a good student or a good athlete or a good combination of the two, and uh, the colleges will pay for you to go there. I wasn't that great of an athlete, so I was a good student, and it worked out. And then in the end, it came down to two colleges, and West Point was one of them. And I flipped a coin, and West Point it was. And then my inability to quit something once I started, it kept me kept me going. <laughs> 
I love that. I mean, having that trait inability to quit. So just, <laughs> but I mean, it's a good trait to have. You want to start something and you want to see it to the end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my, my, there, we'll probably talk about my brother, but, uh, uh I, I like to call, well, yeah, I like to call him Eric 2.0. You know, like I love getting to compete against him and seeing how he, how, him win competitions, seeing him like how successful he is in life, you know, because, uh, it's like well, looking at him, looking at my brother Noah. Uh, seeing what he's accomplished in life and where he's going, everything he's doing, it's it's like I'm I'm seeing all of the all the best parts of me made better. You know, it's really great. And uh, one day, and I, I tell you, I can't just tell you a story. I got to tell you a story to tell you a story. And I yes. tell you that I tell you that to tell you that one day when we were <clears throat> when I was living in Hawaii and he he visited me, we did this 10k. We were getting ready for a Spartan race, and he was we were doing this 10k on Hickam Air. Force Base, and this uh, guy stayed with us the entire way, you know, until the very like last 200 meters, and then he, you know, bowed out. And then at the end, I told Noah, I was like, man, I wonder what that's like, you know, to stay with the whole time, and you just, you know, just been out the end. And he looked at me, without even skipping a beat, and he says, "Are you kidding me? I, I never want to know what that's like because once you know what it feels like to do that, it's easier to do it again, and you'll do it again." And I was like, man, that's a great attitude to have, and uh, and it's that's it. Well, you can you can never quit because once you once you give up you know yeah. and there's a there's a there's a difference between reaching a limit reaching your limit and just and quitting because once you quit yeah that's that sentiment where like now you know what that feels like and you, you're more likely to do it again man that's really um i mean that's profound because you're right there is a the difference between quitting and finding your limits and once you know what it feels like to quit or to stop and decide that you're you're done um that's something that you can you can decide well, while you're racing or whatever it is, even if it's athletically or not athletically, um, you can make that decision more easily than to say, oh, I'll just I'll just stop here. Yeah, and it's such an important distinction because you know any any athlete, any competitor anybody who's an athlete knows the difference when I say quitting versus reaching your limit. You know the difference between you are you are there at the end of your rope and you have gone as far as you can go, you know, and then it just kind of it ends versus you know, the, I know I kind of gave in there. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so, Eric, clearly, um, you and your brother Noah have a great relationship. And um, it's really cool that you guys both had the opportunity um, to move forward um, and be contestants on this season of the Titan Games. So for you, how did this opportunity to be a contestant on this season come about? So <laughs> my brother and I, Again, tell you a story, tell you a story. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's, it started with uh, he and I uh, competing in the, the inner service, so all the military's uh, Alpha Warrior competition. And the Alpha Warrior competition is the entire military's uh, combination of the CrossFit Games and uh, Ninja Warrior. So there's a strength event and an obstacle, a strength event and an obstacle, and he did this whole thing. And uh, he was the Air Force champion, and I was the Army champion for that thing. So then we got to go head to head against each other and against the Navy and Marine Corps champion uh, in the final inner service battle competition thing. So uh, because we won that, uh, m my brother's wife used the power of social media because I didn't, I don't, I didn't have an Instagram or that. So she used the power of social media to write NBC and The Rock and you know the Titan Game Show, and she just simply said like, "Hey, check these guys out," <laughs> and. And I guess they did. And we got a call uh, from one of the casting directors saying, hey, would you be interested in doing this show? Which, of course, we're like, what? I mean, we get to go. We actually get to go hang out together to to have a bunch of other adults play games. Heck, yeah, this sounds like the best thing ever. So, <laughs> yeah, that's how, kind of how it came about. Then we went to the Combine in January in Los Angeles. And we did really well at that thing. And, you know, uh, we matched with a show kind of one of the competition was kind of looking for. Uh, and and then we got invited back for the show from the first and uh, the beginning of February. Wow, <laughs> that's really yeah. cool. I mean, obviously, what it turned into that um, you got to become contestants on the Titan Games, but I had no idea um, that there was that inner military where everybody um, you get to compete and hang out together, and that you and your brother had that opportunity. That's really amazing. It is. It's 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 great too. And what's funny is like the. People from AF, 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 and, and, and Army Foreign Forces Network and Stars and Stripes and different military art uh, publications that were asking us for, hey, you guys have some pictures of you guys competing, you know, when you're younger or whatever. And I was looking and looking, and no, none. I mean, he's 10 years younger than me. 
but we don't have any pictures of us having to compete against it because we never did. That's, and that was kind of what was so special about not only the Alpha Warrior competition through the military, but through the Titan Games. It's that it gave us it gave us the an opportunity that our, through our whole lives we never had, and that was to to not only be able to like compete against each other with each other, uh, but also do something on such a grand scale. But yeah, it gave us the opportunity that we pretty much never had our whole life. Wow. That's, I mean, that really is incredible. And then too, like you said, not really being raised in athletics or that not being a huge part of your life because you moved around so much. Um, But then too, that you both have this incredible athletic aptitude and you're able to showcase that um, in multiple ways now. Yeah, it it, it definitely took a lot of work. People were like, oh, well, you're just naturally, my my strength is in running and endurance stuff. And like, oh, well, you're just naturally a good runner or whatever. No, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) No, you're not. And uh, it takes it takes a lot of work. I and mean, even people who are good at running don't like it. No, I'm just kidding. Even <laughs> if you're good at running, it still it still takes a lot of effort, you know, to to maintain it to be good at. So it uh, sure um, there's always like natural genetic aptitude towards things, but in the end, I just we just really wanted to be healthy for life. It wasn't even really much about like competing and stuff. I just wanted to be healthy and, you know, have a have, look at myself when I'm like 50, 60 years old and still be able to just do life, whatever comes up. That was always my goal. Um, and luckily it's worked out. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I love that. And you're right. I, I was a runner. And there's this saying, our sport is your sport's punishment. Nobody likes to run. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. It's true. <laughs> um, so, Eric, I mean, this is, um, I mean, having this incredible experience and then getting to ex- um, have that experience with your brother who, I, I mean, again, I, I love how you um, speak of him and clearly how amazing your relationship is. Um, and then knowing, too, that the Titan Games is a show created by The Rock. Do you have any recollection of maybe when you first became aware of who The Rock was and um, yeah, just became aware of his presence prior to being on the show? Oh man, when did I realize who The Rock was? Um, I never watched, I never watched um, much professional wrestling. Uh, I was familiar with it growing up and like you played WrestleMania video games and whatnot, but like there was a a generation where I, I was in college when The Rock was just starting, when he was doing wrestling and stuff, and I was wrapped up in engineering in college and then being a lieutenant and deploying Afghanistan and things. So I wasn't really, there was a time frame where he was coming up that I wasn't really involved in watching TV or whatever else. Um, And it was, when I really became aware of who he was, was when I was in Newfoundland on a dive mission, on a recovery mission. uh, And when we were in the middle of nowhere in Newfoundland, the WWF, WWE superstars of wrestling were doing a, a show in Newfoundland and Hulk Hogan and all of those, these guys that you remember from everywhere were all staying at our hotel. And we got to talk in and hung out with them for a couple of days while they were doing the show. And then of course, everybody starts talking about, you know, the more current wrestlers, which everybody who I was with, they all stayed up with that stuff and they were talking about everybody. And that's right there. When I learned that we, they made us watch all of the wrestling stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's when I became aware of who the rock was. And then, of course, I made a pact that uh, I will watch every rock movie that uh, ever came out. And if uh, I made a, a caveat to that, where if he's shirtless in the movie, I will watch it twice. <laughs> <laughs> of course, obviously. <laughs> so the and like the, I think the rundown was the first movie that I ever saw with the Rock, uh, and I was like, yeah, this is great. So yeah, I, it's a, it's impossible not to like the guy. Absolutely, right. I dare you. I def- it's like uh, it's trying to it's like. Uh, Daniel Tosh said, like, you ever try to be miserable on a wave runner? It's impossible. It's like, try try not to like the wave runner. It's impossible. <laughs> I love that. That's true. I mean, because he is such a, it seems like he's such a genuine person. Um, and then, of course, oh, yeah. he's in, just, yeah. Just, just fantastic. And then, uh, like, they say the camera adds 10 pounds. And for the show, I genuinely hope that's true for me. Because, like, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty skinny guy. And <laughs> my, brother, my brother and I are the skinniest guys at a whole show. And I really, come on, camera, give me, give me five pounds. I mean, 10 pounds, give me, give me at least five pounds. My little chicken legs need some help on, on TV. <laughs> but for like, the, but for the rock, the camera takes away 40 pounds. Like you see him in a movie and you're like, yeah, he's obviously a big guy. And then he comes up behind you and you're like, my gosh, I was not ready for the mountain of a human being that is standing in front of me. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. 
I love that. And I mean, um, yeah, I imagine he's such a like a massive human being. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that you and your brother are going to per- be portrayed in a great way. You'll probably be like, you won't even recognize yourselves. You'll be so buff on TV. <laughs> <laughs> be great. It's, I think it's mostly going to be all the lighting. That's what it's all, be. Lighting. all the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> Just Very in the right way. Lighting. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Well, Eric, um, now that you've had um, this incredible experience and then you and your brother Noah being able to share it together, both both of you overcoming incredible things and doing such amazing things in your life and now having this platform to um, really push yourselves forward and push and encourage others forward too, but then as well being able to interact with a bunch of other incredible people on the show um, and sharing those experiences, what would you say is your definition of a titan? To me, what it means to be a titan is to be a reflection of the greatness that exists throughout our country. The only difference between me, you know, Eric, being up there and being showcased in this competition is the slightest bit of opportunity. I got the opportunity to do this. There's very little difference between me or my brother or any other competitors and, and the rest of America, anybody listening right now. We are all great and we all do great things and have the capacity for greatness. And the only thing that makes a difference most of the time is having that little bit of opportunity to succeed when called. And to be a Titan for me means not squandering that opportunity. When I was given the chance and called, I can be and will be a great reflection of the greatness that exists outside of me so that when somebody else sees it, they realize that I can do that because they can. And if you had, if they had the opportunity, they would. So that's, it means to me to be a good reflection of the greatness that exists everywhere. So Eric, now um, having this chance, so um, to be on the Titan Games and knowing everything that you've achieved so far in life, and now this opportunity comes up, experiencing um, competing athletically with your brother in this in this way that you never were before, and now looking forward, knowing that you can use this platform that you've been granted um, to help continue to encourage people and, and be that light, and both you and your brother can do that together. Um, just looking back over your life and looking forward, knowing you're going to continue to achieve everything you set your mind to. I just have one final question that I ask all of my interviewees. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh, oh man. <clears throat> That's, what, do you want to, what, what is your immortality? <laughs> um, again, I want to be remembered as a positive example of the military community that represents our nation in general <clears throat> so somebody the the goal always should be for someone to look at someone in a uniform of any kind and say i want to be like that that is a great reflection of our nation that is a and that is the kind of person i want defending me our nation and our values so i if if that is the impression people i'm if that is the impression I'm, i leave people with from seeing my brother and I, you know, play our games on TV, then that is absolute success. Um, and the caveat to that is when people always ask uh, me or my brother or, or anybody who will be on this show or anything in like fitness community in general, they you will always ask, well, what do I need to do to get in shape? Or what should I do? You know, I don't know where to, where to start or what to do. Uh, in the army, we have a phrase that just that always says, "In the absence of orders, attack." You know, <laughs> and go along along the lines of that same mentality for fitness is: if you don't know what to do, or you're not sure what to do, start doing something. Just make doing something part of your natural behavior, and then you'll figure out what works for you. Because that's the beautiful thing about fitness, about running, about you know your level of activity and health and whatever else is it's it's for you by you, you know. The race is only against you, and it's however far and long you want it to go to whatever end that you desire for yourself. Comparing yourself to somebody else's level of fitness or somebody else's appearance or whatever else, yeah, it's, yeah, there's no sense in it because that's not you. That might not be what you want, and that's not where you want to end up. Uh, so do 
something and make that part of your natural behavior. And then you'll figure out what works the best for you for where you want to go and your goals. And then you can talk to people like me or like my brother or like anybody else um, who seems to be along the same lines, the kind of thing that you want to do for fitness and, you know, get advice and get little workouts and get tips from them. But uh, it's, remember, it's, it's always a race against you. And it's, uh, that's why it's great. Thank you all for tuning in to today's installment of the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. To learn more about each of these Titan athletes, be sure to check out their information in the links in my show notes. Furthermore, to stay up to date on all things coming out of the KMF Collective, be sure to subscribe to the Keep Moving Forward YouTube channel and follow along on social media, also available in the show notes. As the creator of the Titan Games, Mr. Dwayne The Rock Johnson says, Titans aren't born, they're made. And I hope today's story helped you realize all that you are capable of becoming if you put in that hard work and just keep moving forward.